Hey guys, uh, so this video I'm going to cover the De La Hiva guard. So in the last video I talked about how before going into the techniques in depth, I like to explain the overview of the position, what the position's about, so you kind of have a framework to build on. All right, so the De La Hiva guard, we're going to focus mainly on the bottom perspective today, but understand to develop good passing or good sweeps in a guard position, you kind of need to understand both perspectives at the same time. You can't be good at passing the De La Hiva guard if you don't know what the guy is trying to do, and also your guard will be much better as you understand the potential threats of the guy on top. All right, so let's start off with uh, the position as I'm going to define it. So it's really uh, kind of confusing because when I say De La Hiva guard, uh, and when most people say De La Hiva guard, what they really mean is that you're controlling the ankle or the pant leg. Some guys will hug the leg, underhook. These are all different variations, but really this is more what the De La Hiva guard is, okay? The hook, the De La Hiva hook is this. The foot going in here on the near side, or sometimes you can go across uh, deep De La Hiva hook. Right, that's a De La Hiva hook, but really what defines the position is more what my hands are doing. If I have both sleeves, right, I have a De La Hiva hook, but really quickly, this can be lasso, spider, I could be going underneath, switching to like x star variations. What defines this position is both sleeves, right? So that's when someone says De La Hiva guard, it's kind of confusing. If I say De La Hiva, I could be referring to collar sleeve De La Hiva, which is completely different than double sleeve, which is different than cross sleeve and all these variations. So generally when people say De La Hiva guard, they mean you're controlling the ankle or the pant grip. All right, so that's just defining what we're uh, doing here. So why this position is so important is because it's so easy to get to and so effective for controlling. It's probably one of the most important guards in modern Jiu Jitsu competition for that reason. You see everyone use it, uh, it's so versatile. There's so many attack variations to single legs, to barambolos, to X guard, to ankle locks, like so many things. Um, and what you're looking for when you're trying to develop your guard, like I talked about in the guard retention video, is you defend yourself, but eventually you need to tie the guy up, right? And some guards are really good for tying the guy up, like take X guard, for example. Amazing guards, one of my favorite guards. But it's not an easy position to get to. It would be like if I said, what guard do you play? And you say, I play the triangle guard, right? You have to achieve the triangle. It's a little bit harder to get to. If it was like a video game, like positions have different attributes. It's like offensive strength, defensive strength. One of them is ease to get to. The De La Hiva is extremely easy to get to and extremely good for defending and extremely good for attacking. So for that reason, it needs to be an, a weapon in everyone's arsenal, right? So like getting to the position is so common because like maybe I'm on my back defending the guy I was about to pass and he kind of has his hands away. I can't get the sleeve and he stands close. You just grab the ankle, right? Now we have the pants and we can build from here. I could be here. I could get a collar grip like this and jump and get control. Okay, really easy to get to, all right? So now what I'm gonna do in the rest of this video is kind of just go over the main styles of attack from here. Okay, the main three options the guy on bottom is looking for here. First off, in this video, we're talking about the ankle grip or the pant grip. They function relatively similar. Uh, this leg, the De La Hiva hook doesn't even always need to be in. Sometimes I just have my knee up like this. Sometimes I have my De La Hiva hook in. With the De La Hiva hook in, he can push it down really easy. So it doesn't always stay. So it's more the leg control. It should more appropriately be called ankle control guard. All right, so with my right hand is the main offensive uh, control that I'm looking for. So there's different styles. One style is I'm looking for this sleeve. So for this guy, most of his attacks are either a leg drag, trap my leg for a knee cut, or a folding pass. And most of those, he has to control this leg to do anything. So when he tries to grab, I'm looking for his sleeve. If I can get his sleeve, I can break the grip. I can push his hip out and go to sit up guard. I can look for the sleeve here. Come around here. Yeah. I can look for the sleeve here and do this like classic game like this. If I can't get the sleeve, he like postures up a little bit. I could feed the belt, feed the lapel if it's out like this. This is kind of the game Lucas Lepre plays. I'll try to uh, put in some clips in the video uh, when I, uh, at the end. Um, so, you know, Lucas comes up on a single leg here and you can go into a whole deep game from this position. It's very strong. <laughs> Pulls out of the online. That was close. To an advantage. Right back One into his sweep and double leg. Signature sweeps. Nice double. Another game when you get the sleeve is you can put the foot in the bicep like this and we can start playing the Leandro guard where you have one spider hook, one leg uh, on the outside and we loop it in and pull them forward and start looking for the ankle pick sweep or we transition to an X guard variation. It's also very common, very defensively sound.
Another one with the sleeve is if you're here, you can tap and hit these daily Hiba X positions, right? The power with the sleeve control is that it's really hard for him to do anything about this leg. It can't pull his arm back, all right? So those are the, some of the main options with the sleeve. So because of this, a common game you get in with guys who are experienced is they don't want to give you the sleeve. They'll, they'll go for your leg and when you reach, they pull away. So we play this kind of like cat mouse thing with the grip, right? So in those cases, it's also very easy. So like he keeps the hand away. I can go up and start playing with the collar, right? With the collar, some of the main options are, you can keep the hand away now for now, okay? So with the collar, some of the main options are, I can go from here and start trying to bear him bolo, right? And take him backwards and start like a bolo game. If I'm here and I'm threatening that game and he steps over my leg hard, I can bump and lift and go to X guard, right? X guard variation. Leandro Lowe does that bump to X guard a lot. And then obviously Mendez, Grippo, Paulo Miao, a lot of the guys use the Baron Bolo sequence. I think they're all really good. You don't even have to be really into the Baron Bolo to use it. You can use it more just to sweep the guy. It's such a powerful threat. Right the X guard. He's gonna come on top yep, here. Yep. Try not to. Another thing you can do if the guy has the hand away, you can push out with this lapel here and just go straight for the setup guard to threaten, right? Um, it's important to understand, like the reason I'm showing all of this at once is because these positions do not exist, like they don't function in isolation. I can't only do the sleeve game. If the guy never gives me the sleeve, I need to mix it up. So you start to build a game off it. So let's say I want to do the collar uh, Baron Bolo threat game, and I'm going for the collar the whole time, but he's dominating my leg. It can be a little bit harder, right? Because he's controlling. But look, I go for the sleeve, he keeps his hand away, right? I get the collar, boom, and now I'm starting to threaten the Bolo, right? You start to mix the games together, right? Another common situation that can happen, I'm looking for the sleeve, he won't get the sleeve, okay? Is I start to come up for the collar, see I come up on my elbow here to, to, to get the collar grip aggressively. Right, is I can come up for the collar and he breaks the grip constantly. Right, every time I touch it, he breaks the grip. Right, so in that case, now I have to start looking for something else. Right, but because his posture is up so much, it's hard for him to put an immediate pass on. I can start doing things more aggressively, like grab the lapel, kick out, go here. If you wanted to threaten the worm guard, right, I don't really play the worm guard much, but if I'm here like this and I can't get it, right, this is an easy threat. I can start to go here and start feeding the worm. Now, look, if, if I don't even like playing the worm, right, and I come up and like he won't give the sleep, and I start doing this, he may start respecting this, right, because he doesn't want to get put in worm guard. Most people don't like to be there, right? So like I start to go for us, he'll start trying to deal with the leg again, right? Boom, I come back down, get the sleeve, break, and now I'm sitting up to the position again, right? So you need to understand how all these things function together, right? I can be here looking for this, he won't give me a grip, then I can start looking to tap and lift my hip and go to like a De La Hiva X kind of series, right? And I can start building from there. Um, the other game here that's also good is if I can get this cross sleeve grip, but I wouldn't show it as the primary from this position because the sleeve is so common because he grabs. The collar is common because you can always get it when he pulls away. This hand, if he has a good grip on my pants, is really hard to break, to do anything with. And if he's on my lapel, I can't do anything with it either. So usually when I have like the cross sleeve De La Hiva, I'm playing some other position like spider. I go here and then I let go and switch to it. Right? Generally, if I'm starting with just the pant control or the ankle control, it's hard to work my way to that cross sleeve. So I primarily focus on getting that other sleeve, right? Or going for the collar and setting something up like that. In the case that he does reach across with this early or something, I, I may get that and then you can tap and lace and go for the back. There's a lot of things you can do with that as well. You can go to sit up guard here with the cross sleeve, right? Things like that. Um, and again, the main threats, I'm gonna do a separate video on the, the passing series from here, uh, but the main threats of the guy on top is he's looking to either trap my leg for a knee cut or a folding pass. He's looking to leg drag. Uh, sometimes they'll pull this leg up and reverse leg drag. Uh, they're trying to stack, right? Um, that's good. So again, the purpose of this video is if I, if I do a, t a video where I just show you guys like here's a, a pass from De La Hiva or here's a sweep from De La Hiva, it's not the most useful when you, the, you don't understand the context of the whole position, right? If you're just trying to force one move, but it's not available, it's not gonna work. 
right? So you have to find a way to kind of develop your overall view of the position, uh, watch a lot of competition footage of the position, get what it's about, and then you're gonna start finding where these moves will fit in, right? So uh, in the future videos, I'm gonna go more in depth on like, okay, what do you do? You get the sleeve, you push the leg out, and how to de develop the sit-up guard game, and then how to develop the low guard game. And you wanna build those things in isolation, and then after you kind of learn to play them all well, you will personally choose from a position of knowledge, because you can play them all, which one works best for you. But often what I see people do is they, they decide really early on, they're like, oh, I don't like that guard, I play this guard, but they haven't even tried the other one, so they don't know. You need to learn to play all the different positions well, and then you can start stringing these combos together. But if you limit yourself just to, to only the sleeve control, you're gonna have a hard time when the guy won't give you the sleeve control. All right, guys? Um, so as always, guys, please comment, ask questions. Uh, if you're on Reddit, like uh, more questions, and uh, thanks a lot, guys. The best you can do to help is share, subscribe, and like, thanks a lot.